Hi, I'm Jeff Steineider, Vice President and General Manager of the Industrial and Networking Edge Processing Product Lines at NXP Semiconductors. I'm really happy to speak to Semicon Taiwan 2022 today about the building blocks for intelligent automation. So I'd like to set the stage first with some of the reasons we need to really drive intelligent automation. And the first one is that our infrastructure today is inefficient and fragile. If we look across the world, nearly half of all global waste is caused by manufacturing inefficiencies, such as building the wrong mix of product, building product too early so it actually expires, or a lack of connection between our supply chains, manufacturing, and ordering systems that are all driving incorrect actions on the manufacturing side. If we look further through the chain into delivery, up to 30% of delivery trucks run empty, and this wastes both fuel and equipment, as well as personnel. And then finally, making the edge more intelligent and adding intelligence to automation can help improve op operations. Taking advantage of activities like predictive maintenance this can actually catch problems before they occur, preventing up to $650 billion per year of downtime costs. If we look at another aspect that's increasingly impacting the manufacturing world, it's the sophisticated threats that we're now facing, and it's quickly outpacing the security that's in place today. As we add more intelligence to these systems, they also become more interconnected, which is necessary to share the data to really drive operations. Manufacturing was the most attacked sector last year, accounting for up to 23% of the reports of ransomware in the industry. And we've already seen how these ransomware attacks can impact other industries, such as the pipeline attack in the United States a year ago that impacted oil and gas delivery up and down the East Coast. Attackers are using increasingly sophisticated techniques and they're attacking very high value systems such as factories and process nodes that generate both energy for us as well as the goods that we depend on every day. Now, what do we need to build intelligent automation? AI is a key input that we're going to be able to bring to bear to improve automation in a variety of ways. The first one is with productivity. Using AI, we can increase throughput to enhance automation tasks such as scanning, product identification, and this will allow machine and lines to move product at a much higher rate replacing humans to really drive faster machines that are more reliable and can run and make decisions at a much faster rate. We can use AI to increase safety in these factories, pulling humans out of dangerous conditions and replacing them with robots in those cases, as well as pulling humans out of repetitive tasks that robots can uh, perform in a much better way. And then finally, we can actually use AI to prevent some of these cyber attacks. We have examples that we've worked on within NXP using artificial intelligence to actually identify attacks as they are happening, either on targeted machines or even machines that have been compromised and are starting to attack other systems within a network. Using AI, we can identify this early and actually perform corrective actions before it becomes a bigger problem, shutting down infected systems or resetting them to a safe state. While we apply these technologies to improve the intelligence of automation systems, we have to recognize that there's a lot of complexity that we have to deal with. There is the latency and cost 
of sending all of the data today to the cloud and pushing more intelligence to these systems themselves can help reduce this, driving decision making at the edge where the data is collected. There is legacy hierarchical communication systems and a network topology that is set up that enables single points of failure and also creates separation between an information domain and an operational domain. And it's important to link those together to truly bring the benefits of intelligent automation to bear. There is a low awareness of energy consumption throughout systems today. And this is going to become increasingly important as we work towards a greener world. Systems today are often designed with security as an afterthought and have not been designed from the ground up to incorporate secure, best-in-class secure practices. And as we connect these systems together and add intelligence to them, this is something we have to address as an industry. And finally, there's lots of legacy software scattered throughout the factory today, and this needs to be brought onto a common platform so that it's easier to replace equipment and upgrade equipment for new use cases. So these are just five of the areas that we're going to have to focus on if we're going to really build a resilient and efficient infrastructure. So let's talk about how we do that. We see there being four major areas to build out intelligent automation. The first one is edge computing. And edge computing is about moving computing towards the edge devices where data is collected so that you can add intelligence to those edge devices and actually perform actions and make decisions based on the data that you collect. Machine learning is going to be embedded within those edge computing systems, which allows you to make more sophisticated decisions, moving from just a simple yes, no decision based on a well-known set of data, you can actually train equipment to take into account multiple factors and actually learn on the job or learn as some of the data is changing. By embedding machine learning into these edge computing systems, they'll be more efficient and provide much lower latency decisions. We're gonna be adding more features around end-to-end -end security. Every industrial automation system that is added intelligence must be connected as part of an overall network. And this increases the attack surface. So having security embedded in every single system is paramount to being able to increase the intelligence of our automation systems. And then finally, being able to communicate between all of these this enables software updates to update those machine learning algorithms, to add new software to the edge computing systems. It allows the different systems to share data with each other, which can be used to optimize operations. And so real-time communications is, is incredibly important because it's going to allow both this data communication, which is going to improve efficiency, but it also needs to protect the operational technology commands that are running the factories today. And it'll allow the support of both of those types of traffic on one converged network. So as we talk about edge processing, what this means for us is really moving the processing from the cloud all the way down to the edge components. When the IoT was really conceived, the original idea was forcing all of the data from these edge components up into a central computing network in the cloud, making all decisions there, and then passing those decisions back down to the edge. When we enable edge processing, we can actually keep that data at the edge. You can make real-time decisions. You remove the feedback loop all the way up to the cloud, and you let those edge systems make a decision locally and you cut out all of the network latency. This in turn can help reduce data center and network costs. You no longer need as much storage in the data center in the cloud, 
And you also don't need the high-speed bandwidth to get all of the data up into that cloud system. This safeguards privacy. You only have to send some of the summary or semantic data up to the cloud, but you can keep all of the raw data actually on-premise in the factory. And then finally, this leads to increased security. Again, much of this data is incredibly sensitive and can be considered IP on its own. Now you have the ability to keep the raw data at the local premises, and you increase your resiliency in case of attack because the factory or the system on the edge can continue to run even if it loses that connection to the cloud. And it only needs to connect to the cloud to provide updates, summarize operations, and receive regular software upgrades. So let's talk about how we now can bring in machine learning intelligence to the edge and how we can use that to enhance both the efficiency of operations as well as safety for the workers. So we'll start on the left where we bring in a variety of different data sources. They can either be isolated on their own or these can actually be combined. And then they feed into several methods for processing them with machine learning. And we have examples of using machine vision, which can then feed into outcomes such as product inspection. So using machine vision, we can then have an automated system inspect product and pull out bad product. It can also be used to inspect inputs. Uh, if you're building a very complex system, you want to make sure you don't ruin the end product by putting in a faulty system that is a much lower cost of goods compared to what you're building and sending to your customers. We can take advantage of anomaly detection for predictive maintenance. And that pulls from a variety of different sensor inputs, such as vibration, voltage, current, temperature. And you can actually pull those from equipment in the field, identify anomalies and flag equipment that it may need maintenance from a technician, preventing downtime. You can uh, optimize the operations of the factory by pulling in information from your supply chain as well as your ordering chain, and really make sure that all of your equipment and personnel are being utilized to their full capacity. And then finally, taking some of the techniques such as object recognition, natural language processing, we can actually make operations safer for the workers there, allowing them to interact with machines with simply a gesture or a voice command, and also detecting whether they go into a dangerous zone and having the equipment react to that using vision-based systems. So these are all some of the ways we can really drive improvements using machine learning. Next, let's talk about how we can use a coherent networking system to really apply this distributed intelligence at the edge. The first piece is having converged networks and allowing both the operational technology data that's providing the real-time control of all these systems to share one network that's also providing data exchange for training algorithms such as machine learning, as well as enabling software upgrades of all the equipment. Then we add some of the operational equipment itself. So optimize motion control, which can involve both the individual motors, as well as higher end motion control systems controlling robotic arms. On top of that, we add more vision and recognition systems, which are used to guide those robotic arms, pick and place machines, as well as inspect product. And then finally, we can tie this together, bringing it back to the cloud and allowing digital twins, which can be used to simulate the activities of the physical factory in the cloud before you make changes, optimizing the design of the factory 
or changing layouts and changing the mix of product that you're going to run into so that you can really ensure that you aren't creating new problems when you implement changes to your system. All of this can be enabled through the application of 5G, giving you a secure and low latency connection between the factory and the cloud, while at the same time enabling more mobility and flexibility within the factory. And of course, as we've talked about, all of this needs to be secured. So of course, applying firewalls around the outer periphery of the factory, but then making sure that every step along the way has some of the security features we're going to talk about later. So as we look at a converged network, one of the ways we can really drive this is moving forward to time-sensitive networking. And time-sensitive networking allows you to move to a higher speed ethernet network, supporting gigabit or multi-gigabit speeds. So you can exchange higher bandwidth data, such as multiple video feeds from these cameras. And at the same time, it allows you to set aside certain paths in the traffic that can be used for the control traffic that needs to be real-time. Separating the real-time data from the best effort data that goes into more of the IT network. TSN can run both across the factory floor as well as within individual automation cells running in between the equipment there. And because it's an IEEE standard, you can plug in existing equipment as well as future equipment that's enabled with TSN. As we go beyond this and we add the ability to have more reconfigurable factories, 5G gives us the extra benefit of mobility. 5G fits very closely with the TSN paradigm and allows several of the features to flow seamlessly between a wired network and the wireless 5G network. And so they are a perfect pair together to apply inside factories or even wider area networks to enable that communication that handles both operational technology as well as information technology. Let's take a look at what it means to provide end-to-end -end security. And we need all of these components to really address the fact that there's more attack surfaces as we connect all of these systems. The first one is to add secure communications. And this allows end-to-end -end encryption of data that's transported between different systems, both within a single factory and possibly between multiple factories as you start to build more complex products. End-to-end -end encryption will ensure that your data is protected in the event that an attacker gets access to it, either within the factory system or as the data is being transported between factories. We must have systems that have the ability to perform encryption, both at the transport layer as well as in a symmetric encryption environment. Then we get into the ability to secure operations. And this involves securing both the hardware and having key storage within these devices, as well as securing the first level of software loading with Secure Boot. And this makes sure that attackers cannot install unknown software on your devices, and only an approved software load can boot on any of these systems that are in the factory. We then need to extend this to, again, authenticate the firmware which is loaded afterwards, as well as application updates, so that these devices can be securely updated throughout their life cycle. As we tie this back to machine learning use cases, all of these systems are going to be updated with new models as conditions change or factories are repurposed to work on new products. So having the security functions within these systems will allow you 
to update the software over time and manage these systems all the way through their life cycle. Knowing that every piece of software that you deploy on it has to be authenticated and attackers cannot introduce their own software versions that may be used in a ransomware attack. And then finally, it even means you can turn down systems and ensure that if you have sensitive IP, it will not escape your factory once systems are removed from operation. In order to enable this, it's about driving simplicity to the security model. NXP is working closely with bodies such as IEC 62443 and making sure we have the ability to aid you in getting 62443 compliance. It's about having flexibility with how you implement these, and of course, making sure that all of these security capabilities are still cost-effective to deploy in systems today. I'd like to end with an example of how we took some of these functions and we built a system within NXP to actually take advantage of machine learning in an automation application within our own semiconductor fabrication sites. So we took a Basler MIPI camera, uh, and Basler is one of our partners, and we paired that with our i.mx 8M+. And so we deployed this to do image acquisition in one of our semiconductor fabs. Using our i.mx 8M Plus and its embedded machine learning accelerator, uh, the neural processing unit, we were able to train that system to actually examine wafer trays as they were stacked within the factory. And what we were doing was using the system to determine whether any of these wafers were stacked improperly, missing a wafer, or had a wafer that was not properly seated in the container and thus automate this, provide an additional visual check beyond what the humans in the factory were doing. And so what this was able to drive for us was ensure that any wafers that were improperly packed were removed, uh, removing possibly damaged material and keeping it out of the line. And we were able to adapt this over time by retraining the system finding areas where it might be missing use cases or failures as these wafers were packed and driving further improvements to the system. And we were able to actually install this at one of our fabs in Nine Haven. So finally, I'd just like to sum up with what we've covered today. It's important to increase the intelligent automation for factory automation, because this is what's going to drive efficiency and improvements for the world as we go into a more energy constrained environment. The four building blocks that we consider to be truly important for building this intelligent automation are number one, edge compute. And this is across a variety of platforms, ranging from microcontrollers, all the way up to applications processors. All of these systems are now going to have embedded machine learning so that they, they can make even more sophisticated decisions based on the data at the factory edge. Every system is going to have increased security features in them that protect against outside attacks and allow you to authenticate and guarantee that only your software is running on these systems. And then finally, we are adding real-time communications capabilities to a number of these systems so that they can efficiently and deterministically deliver operations traffic while at the same time providing the higher bandwidth information technology traffic across the network that really enables more intelligent automation systems. So thank you for your time, and I look forward to speaking to you more. If you're interested in learning more about these systems, please visit us at nxp.com industrial.